Hello, welcome back to Court by the Cut. I am on a railway line. So this is the, um, the old Bidlands Railway. It's the old branch line down to Stonehouse. Don't worry, I'm above the canal. I'm not cheating on you all yet. On my last video, I, uh, I took us up to here. Uh, well, on my last video on the Cotswolds. So I'm just about to go under the Ebley Bypass where you would have seen me stop. I'm going to take a little walk up now to Ebley Wharf. Which is a mile or so up the canal. Lovely little area, as you'll see. Some interesting points down here. Uh, starting off just here um, with the with the drying fields and uh, Cotswold Boat Mobility. So Boat Mobility is um, is a charity that have uh, uh, do do a lot of work with disabled people. They've got boats uh, which they they uh, take disabled people out canoes and stuff like that, so they can enjoy the canal. Um, most boats obviously it's a bit difficult to get a, wheel a wheelchair in. They've also just took delivery of a new boat uh, which is actually Ebley Wharf and I'll show you when I get up there uh, which can take up to four wheelchairs. They have regulars uh, that come down uh, and they you know they, they do a boat trip up to Ocean uh, and back down which is uh, quite a nice run actually very nice. So this is uh, this is where they're based just up here. There's some uh, more points and stuff up here which I'll, I'll get to. Just to the left here, you can uh, probably see uh, big piles of soil and uh, grit and, and whatnot. This is the uh, this is the drying fields. So what they do, all the sediment they dig out of the canal, all the mud they dig out when they're restoring locks and stuff like that gets brought up here. Obviously, uh, the good stuff sometimes you can't use it. It's brought up here, it's dried out, they put it through um, through like a sieve and uh, uh, you know, uh, clean it all out, get all the rocks out, all the stone out. And then the plan is to sell it um, so you can put it on your garden and grow your crops with. It's very, um, it's very fertile stuff. They have, um, you imagine what's in the canal, you have stuff like this here. You can see the old reeds are rotting. You've got ducks and swans and stuff pooping in here, which adds to it. Leaves falling off trees, falling in. It all can compost down into the bottom. They dig it out. You've got highly fertile soil that would normally you'd have to pay to take away. So the plan for them is to uh, is to sell it, which is which is a great idea. If you want to get some, go on their website and you'll be able to find uh, find out how to do so there. Uh, but it's a great idea. It's going to generate some money for the trust. So the building just to the left here. Uh, was on the right as we walked up is Cotswold Boat Mobility. So that this is uh, where they're based basically. They've got small boats up here as well. It, um, there's a old uh, coal storage up here, which used to be for the for the house. Uh, and they're based right by there. You can see the salt boats up ahead. One of the barges here look so they they fill that up uh, with the silt. They've got a boat with a grabber on it. They fill those up, bring them across here, empty them and then uh, and then take it up there to dry. So this is one of the uh, more important sort of boat mobility. You can see the, uh, the double canoes and stuff they've got here. So you've got the coal pen here as well. So this used to be a, um, uh, it was Marlin's coal pen it was called, and it was part of the Marlin family estate. Uh, they had Stanley um, Park below Southie Common and sells in uh, Stanley Mill. So it supplied all the coal, uh, coal for their steam engines and pressure boilers in the mill. So it would have been brought down here onto the wharf and uh, loaded into here, ready to be moved to the mill.
going um, to about go under Royford Bridge. So it was quite a busy area in the time uh, back in the day. So through here, again, I've said this in other videos. You can, um, you can see the rope marks here. Look, so this is where the old barges were pulled by a horse on a rope, and that's where it was rubbing against the bridge as the horse came around and up the towpath. So this is uh, into the wharf then, where a lot of coal was unloaded. There was a, um, a railway line uh, that came in just to the right on the Midlands uh, railway line. And the, um, the station was only just up there as well. This was uh, called Ford's Wharf. You see it's still being used for ships now, or for the boats now. So again, this is, uh, like I said, back there. So it's full of silt, waiting to go up to the drying fields. I've actually cleared a few. I, I was down here a couple of weeks ago and um, all of them were full down there. Uh, these are only half full. Just on the end of the wharf, you've got what's called an accommodation bridge. So it's a swing bridge, only a small one. It was literally there for the homeowners. Uh, you know, a few landowners on the other side to be able to cross the canal. When the canal was built, it cut their access to the mills in half. Coming up next we have a Royford double lock. Now a double lock is slightly different to a standard lock, as in there's only three sets of gates but two locks. So tr traditionally between locks you'd have a pound, you'd have uh, you know, one, 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 one lock with two gates on, pound, another lock with two gates on taking up the hill. With a double lock you have one lock goes straight into the second lock, so there's no, no pound in the middle. So a, a double lock means you can climb the hill quite quickly. You haven't got a pound in the middle, so you can go up a steep gradient in a much quicker space. But it also saves on price. When you're building it, you only need three sets of lock gates instead of four. So you can see here, you come in, you come in, come in to this lock. This is your next lock. You come raise yourself up in here, go through those gates. You're in the bottom of the next lock immediately, up through, through gates and you're through. The lock itself was constructed in 1779 and it was designed by Anthony Keck. He designed quite a few houses. It was restored in uh, 2010, well it began in 2010 and uh, gained runners up in the uh, 2011 Walkways Reconnaissance Awards on the Historic Environment category. So there you go, one lock straight up into the second. You've got the winding gear here. Uh, so basically when that turns, you've probably seen on some other videos, there'll be a sluice in the bottom, that will lift that sluice and empty water. Not below the lock into this one, it goes into the next lock obviously, and then the, the paddles are on the gates on, on that one. Next we've got quite a cool bridge, it's uh, called Oil Mills Bridge and it was, um, it's been rebuilt. Uh, the original bridge was an arch which was, uh, which was demolished sometime after 1967. 
So the new bridge was completed in May 2008 and they use the existing um, bottom half of the bridge basically uh, and, uh, and built sort of a level bridge on the top, just like a concrete um, bridge which would have been lifted into place. The bridge takes its uh, name from oil mill which was uh, first built in 1721 to produce rape and linseed oils. It uh, then went to cloth production uh, in between 1727 and 1751 and uh, until 1840. The owners went bankrupt in 1786 and the mill was sold to James Lewis who built the present building on the, on the stone base. By 1840 cloth production ceased and the mill was converted to corn and is now home to Snow Bus uh, Business International. They've got this um, statue out here which basically has all the different uses over time. You can see the old, uh, the old bridge here, the curve, that's newer there. And then into, into the straight edge, which goes onto the concrete bridge. And then into Ebley Wharf. This goes on for a little bit. Uh, it's a wharf just down here, going through. There's uh, quite a lot of old mills and stuff down here. First up there, we've got a spill weir in here. This is a circular spill weir. So uh, as you can see, water runs over the top. This is canal water in the outer ring, runs over the top, runs down, drops in, and then there's there's a channel in the bottom of there, which will take the water out down to the to the river. Just uh, up from here as well, an old telegraph pole. I think it's the last one remaining from about 1900. So as we walk through this area, one thing which is abundantly clear is well, how nice it is for a start, but how much you feel like you're in part of the community here. You've got people who live here going about their daily lives. You've got people walking with their kids, with their, you know, with their elderly parents and stuff. Uh, you've got the pub up here. Oh, well, it's, it's a wine bar, calf up here, uh, as well as several other businesses. You've got all the Strug District Council based up here. It's quite, I mean, this is a Sunday afternoon, it's busy, people are walking, enjoying it. And uh, it shows you what a canal can be in the middle of any built up area. You know, they've been sympathetic here to, to the older buildings with the way it's been constructed, and it, it's lovely. I wish some other councils, uh, namely Swindon on the Wilts and Barks, just thought about this as their town centre and what they could do. Swind to the uh, that part of uh, Ebley Wharf. We've got Cloth Mills Bridge here, which is a more modern bridge. And just up on the other side here, you've got a load of, uh, load of old mills. So Ebony Mill dates back to 1818, where the first part of it was built. And now, like I said, holds the council, holds the council uh, as well as several other businesses. There's a gym there. There's a, you can actually hear the kids screaming. There's an indoor play area there as well. You've got a, a coffee and wine bar just across the canal here. Uh, hairdressers just, or well, barbers just around the corner. Boats moored up here from the Cotswold Canal Trust, and it takes you right up to the um, to the stop gates here. So they're flood prevention gates. I'll go into it on the next video, uh, but basically it stops the water running down. Um, this is technically a river beyond this point here. This just stops it flooding backwards. So when you come through, you'll have to open it like you would a lock gate, go through, and then close it back up behind you. To Webley Swing Bridge. I'm just going to cross over to see this boat. I mentioned it a bit a bit further back with the um, Cotswold uh, boat mobility. They can have up to four wheelchairs on it, so it's really good for them. 
um, when they're operating boat ships rather than just one or two that the other boats had. So thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe. Click that bell button to be notified of my future videos. Get on the Cots Cotswold Canal uh, Trust website. I'll put the link in the description and uh, have a look, look at signing up. It's a great way to support all this work and for more to happen in the future. So please do click it. But uh, have a good day and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.